Okay, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Today is the 20th, <clears throat> Saturday, and I would like to continue the narrative that I started the other day with you on the 18th. And um, please bear with me. I have to communicate this because I'm going to make a point. Right? And, and I want to be as accurate as I can. I can't take too much time to explain this because we just don't, um, we can't, you know, do that. We just can't. 20-minute videos or documentaries. We really can't do that. But anyway, um, okay, uh, I'm issued an order by the Department of Natural Resources that is illegal, um, and that order is to depopulate my animals. Again, my animals are my property. They are protected under the Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, the U.S. Constitution being the supreme law of the land. My county sheriff did nothing. He did not run defense for me. So it fell on me. I told him I'm not doing it, and then I got to get a lawyer. So I got a lawyer, and okay, we're going to go to court with them. First thing they do is they bring in the attorney general, right? So I'm paying my lawyer, and you all are paying the DNR's lawyers, and they use the attorney general. The attorney general should have probably said, sorry, can't represent because this guy has constitutional rights, to his property, sorry, you guys are on your own if you want to press it, but the Attorney General didn't. He said, sure, we'll do it. My county sheriff did not call foul, so I'm on my own. It falls to me, and the, the what I have in my arsenal is this. I have the U.S. Constitution. The U.S. Constitution is a contract between me, a citizen, and my government, and it limits what they can do. So this is what I had. <clears throat> turned out to be enough. Okay, later, the Attorney General's office denied us a um, jury, which is guaranteed to me in this contract through the Seventh Amendment. Um, then I said, we will still go to court, and they said, well, then we'll fine you $700,000, $10,000 per animal. Uh, that's a violation of the Eighth Amendment. <clears throat> um, the uh, the county sheriff did nothing, did not step in. And I said, we'll still go to court. We were within 10 days of our trial where they would have had to explain everything and we would have had our day in court. And the attorney general's office, a guy by the name of Harry Martin, uh, moved for dismissal here in Misaki County because he said that I had miraculously complied with their order, which was an out and out absolute lie. I had complied with nothing that they asked me to do. Okay, so the case is dismissed. We were very disappointed. We thought Judge Fagerman should not have. We should have been allowed to explain this out in front of God and country, but uh, evidently they did not want that conversation taking place. And we had a full court and we were recording everything. All right, so that's that's some more of the story. Then I was left with the bills from the lawyers. I was left with, you know, all the broken pieces of a, of a farm that I had to pick up. But we went right back to it. Then in December of um, 2016, no, 2015, sorry, um, I have uh, two state police cars pulling the driveway and two state cars, black sedans, pull in pretty fast, 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, what's this all about? <clears throat> and then I'm handed a search warrant <laughs> to search my property. Um, the search warrant was issued by a judge here in the county, um, and it was over this. It was over this, this picture. I got the wind blowing here. This picture. This picture appeared in a magazine up in Traverse City. It's a it's an online magazine, and I won't say who it is or anything. The picture is a ham. It's a picture of a ham, well, a chef. He's a friend of mine, and I sold it to him. The ham was produced here at Baker's Green Acres, right? And uh, evidently, uh, the Department of Agriculture, they peruse every magazine there is, and if they find one, they want to make sure it's a legal ham. So uh, they... Um, they got together a search warrant, and uh, they got the state police involved. Um, 
And uh, they came here to do a search, and they wanted to search to make sure that I'm making hams properly, you know. It was definitely meant to intimidate. Uh, but where was the county sheriff? Okay, a search warrant's issued in his county. There was no representation of the county sheriff. He sworn to protect and defend my constitutional rights. If a judge is going to uh, sign a warrant, that means my, my constitutional rights of warrantless searches has been has been laid low, and um, the sheriff needs to oversee that. The sheriff probably should have reviewed it and says, you're not searching this guy's house, his vehicles, and his computer for a picture of a ham. You're not going to do that. That is stupid, right? But he was nowhere around. All right, so that happened. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we made, we made them wait a little bit, and... Uh, told them we wanted some of our friends to come and witness the search and they got bugged and they split all right so the search was never done and they never came back I don't know why <clears throat> okay I've just told you a thumbnail story of what happened and I'm at six minutes I have a point to make okay I'm just gonna look go long here <clears throat> this is how they operate okay now, I did prevail in this situation. Why? I prevailed because I have the U.S. Constitution on my side, a contract between me and my government, and it limits them. It limits the government that we've put in place. But what they do is they turn their back on you and they say, yeah, we, we might have violated your constitutional rights. Take us to court. Go ahead. Well, how does that work out? First thing you got to do, retain a lawyer. Oh, this twenty five hundred bucks, and then every minute that goes by, you're paying that lawyer, right? And the lawyers don't want to get it done quick; they want to stretch it out. But the lawyers for the state, oh, they're paid. They get a quarter of a million bucks a year, a lot of them, and they don't care how long it takes. And in my case, the state Department of Natural Resources had three lawyers, right? Three of them that could spend their entire day figuring out how to screw a farmer in um, in Marion, Michigan, who refuses to comply. Okay, here's the point. The county sheriff is elected by the people. And when he's elected, he puts his hand on this, this Bible, right? And he swears before God and country that he will protect the constitutional rights of the people in the county against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Anybody that wants to subvert this document is an enemy of it, right? Do we have enemies within? Why, did, why does our oath say enemies foreign? We know we have foreign enemies, but domestic. That's within our borders. We have enemies of the Constitution. The Constitution is a real pain for some people, and they become enemies of the Constitution. Now, what am I... What am I saying here? What's the sheriff supposed to do? Put up a blockade around my house? No, he didn't have to do that. The sheriff could have very easily made a phone call to the DNR and said, uh, hey, explain this to me. Explain how this lines up with this man's Fourth, Fifth Amendment rights, Eighth Amendment, Seventh. Can you explain this to me? And I'd like that in writing, please. And as soon as you get that to me and I swallow it, then you can proceed. Now, am I saying that that's going to alleviate everything? No, no, no. But at least there's a bump in the road to these tyrannical uh, departments that are unelected and they're gaining more power all the time. And as they gain power, we lose liberty, right? The county sheriff is in place to say no. And he doesn't have to arm wrestle him. He's got the full mandate of the people of the county. And he's got this. He swore an oath to protect and defend this. And by the way, it is the supreme law of the land. And I'm going to make that point here to you very quickly by showing you a letter. Oh, boy. Well, maybe I won't. I'll do that in another one, but I will show it. I wrote a letter to the Attorney General, Bill Schuette, and I said, I need to know. You 
you're the top cop in the state, is the Constitution the supreme law of the land? And I got a, a very uh, short answer. And the answer was yes, it is the supreme law of the land. All right? That means something. Supreme, that means nothing supersedes that law. Nothing supersedes the Constitution. It is supreme. So, as a county sheriff that is protecting and defending the supreme law of the land, you know, you have every advantage that you need to get that job done. Hey, it's Mark from Baker's Green Acres. Don't like to go too long. Anyone can farm.